at me. I swung and I missed it and fall down, almost fall out of the ring. But Dr. Brothers convinced me if you stick with it, Judge, you can be an Olympic gold medalist. I didn't even know what the Olympics were. But finally I did. I was picked. They didn't like my style in the amateur because what I would do, uh, I, when I get nervous, I close my eyes. <laughs> and I swing wild. When I look up, someone would be on the floor. <laughs> I tried to be a baseball player early in life, and I was, I was a good baseball player, but I was always afraid that the ball was going to hit me. So when I get in the ring, it's like you know, a bunch of baseball players after me. <laughs> trying to pitch that ball in my head. <laughs> so I went one fight after another, and I finally qualified for the old Olympic team. Couldn't believe it. They didn't like my style too wild, but the rules were if you win, you proceed, you keep going. And I win by knockout mostly. <laughs> finally, when I was on the Olympic team, I was so afraid. Meeting my opponent from Russia. Now, the finals. Whoever would win this after this would be my fourth boxing match would be a gold medalist. He came out after me, the, my opponent from Russia. And I remember thinking, closed my eyes, and I looked up, he was way across the ring. He came again. Be across the ring. I said, maybe I should open my eyes. <laughs> And when I did, I windmilled him, and I became an Olympic gold medalist. <laughs> so now I'm standing on the, I had a small American flag at that time. Everybody made a lot of talk about it because I'd forgotten people look different. In the Olympic village, you walk up to someone and say, hello, and they speak another language. I said, I have to make everybody know where I'm from. So had my smallest flag in the road for good luck. So I started waving and everyone applaud. And I bowed to the judge and like, we got you now. <laughs> now on the platform, you're standing there with the silver medal and the bronze medal there and I'm on the big platform and they're playing the national anthem. And I heard my cousin in the background saying, you're never gonna be, I said, shut up. <laughs> I must have been American there playing that song. This is what I said in my head, and I just smiled my way on into that victory. I had become an Olympic gold medalist from a guy who had broken his love affair with sleep. Everybody said, well now, you need to make some money. I said, I'm not gonna be a pro fighter. I said, you can make a thousand. I said, ah, you can make 10,000. Now nah. someone said, you can make a million. I said, yep, I'll do it. <laughs> then I became, the top contender knocking one guy all after another. Sometimes I, and I start opening my eyes, by the way. <laughs> I hit guys, sometimes guys were so afraid of me. One time this guy was mad at me in Seattle, Washington. He came after me, I said, what is wrong with you? Someone had told him George was a bum. Just money behind him, you be the money would come behind you. So he came after me and I swung with all my might. <laughs> and I missed him by a foot. He felt the wind. He almost broke my back hugging me. Look like he said, someone lied. I said, I'll get him now. The ref made him break. This time I swung, and I missed him by six inches. He almost hit me like, oh no. I said, I got him now. I swung at this guy with all my might, mm, and I missed him by an inch. When I did, he hit the floor. <laughs> I said, man, get up, and the crowd saw it too. They booed us both. I said, man, get up. And he, he like he's gonna get up, and then he said. <laughs> so the night after, that night they had a little reception, and I wasn't speaking, I was sad. He came up to me, he said, you upset, and I said, yeah. He said, you're really angry at me. I said, yeah. He said, you're mad. I said, yeah. He said, you wanted me to get up. I said, yes. He said, you wanted to kill me then. I said, yes. He said, that's why I didn't get up. <laughs> well, that was the story with me. But next thing you know, I'm matched 
at the number one contender with Smoking Joe Frazier for the championship of the world. Now remember, all of this is happening because I broke my love affair with sleeping. You didn't box them, you had to get up every morning and run. And train. You had to answer. And after a while, you're not only a follower, you become a leader. And I was afraid of Joe Frazier more than any man in the world that I'd ever face. Because with Joe Frazier, if you hit him, he liked it. <laughs> if you miss him, he just made him mad. Smoking? You don't want to fight people with a name like that. <laughs> but I knocked Joe Frazier down that night. I was afraid of him. I knocked him down once. I realized. He's going to kill me. I knocked him down again. I said, oh, he's really mad. I knocked him down again. He jumped up again. I said, oh, the next round, he's going to get stronger. I knocked him down again. After about six times, they stopped the fight and declared me the heavyweight champion of the world.